2016, the ride home, the three of them were shaken by what happened. Charity knew she needed to speak to Tony and let him know that they could have been seen at the hotel through security cameras. She was in enough trouble as it was, but getting busted for sleeping with the assistant principal would have made the hotel incident look like a class field trip. She was especially nervous because she didn't know how much her mom may have already seen. She dropped Travis and Miko off at school. When she pulled up to their cars, neither of them said anything or tried to get out. She cut the car off to see if they wanted to talk about any of it. She hoped they would lift the mood by trying to plan another way to find Janelle. She would have been proud but also drained at the thought. Why didn't you tell us your mom was working on the case? Travis asked. I didn't know. I thought it was just local police myself. Charity turned to look at him in the back seat. You don't think I knew that was gonna happen do you? Nah. I know you're not the type. Travis threw his head back. I just thought it would all be over now. Me too, added Miko. Riding to school now feels so empty. I miss her. I know, I'm sorry. I'm sure this must hurt you like hell too. Charity realized what an impact Janelle had on people. She wondered if she were to go missing, if it would be the same type of reaction, or if it would just be something to talk about because people just saw her as the fun girl who knew all the gossip. Janelle is very special, and if my mom is on it too then, I'm sure they will figure it out. You're right. Travis added before he put his hand on the door handle. Hey, you think there was something to what she was talking about on the phone? Like there was some guy she said she's got or whatever. Think that could be him? I considered it for a moment, but no. She would have said something. I thought I would have been able to tell. For a moment she considered finding out where her mom went and going there to see if it was the guy, but she reconsidered when she thought about her mom whooping her like she stole something. Yeah I doubt it's that or you would have gotten a call from your mom by now. She reassured Travis. Yeah, you're right about that. Later, Travis got out of the car. You okay Miko? Charity asked it as if they needed to be alone for her to really say what she was feeling. Miko thought they were both about to hate her if Charity's mom knew as much as she thought she did. Yeah, just sad we couldn't find her. Thanks for letting me in on the fun or... She felt weird about calling it fun. Just the search for her is what I mean. I don't really think it's fun in any way. I got you. Charity smiled at her. See you later. Miko said as she got out of the car. She expected for Travis to stick around and talk to her, but he was pulling out of the parking lot already without even so much as a glance back at her. Damn. She wondered. Does he still think I did this too? Chapter 17. Guilty? Charity thought it would have been hard to sit down in class after her mom got home to deal with her for going to find Janelle in a strange hotel room. She had her car and phone taken away which to her felt worse in a way. She didn't have access to her friends, social media or Tony. That made it all worse because her last text to him was very cryptic. All she was able to say was, we are about to lay so low we will be invisible. It sounded dramatic which she hated because even though he was only 19, she still hated being seen as a grade school kid. She decided that she'd talk someone into getting her a ride to the library so she could send him an email from there. She had to be smart not to use the school's computer for obvious reasons. So much was at stake and she was scared. And she couldn't get in any more shit with him since they'd just gotten back on good terms. He still had no idea that she went all Nancy Drew the day before. Sarone sat down next to her. Kids whispered because the last time they were in this class together, he was asked to leave class to speak to the police. She felt awful for suspecting him. She felt terrible for suspecting Ayana had anything to do with it or that she knew anyone that did. Although she never really got proof of her innocence. Sarone. Her mouth was open and kept moving around awkwardly because she couldn't figure out just what words to form. I'm sorry. About what? He was afraid she spread some of the rumors that were being spread. That you had to go through that. I know how kids here can be. Yeah, it's cool. Do I look like a badass now? He chuckled. Yeah no, you might. I hadn't thought of it that way. Well, no one is throwing entire desks to knock out the competition trying to date me, so it's probably safe to say I'm just today's gossip. 
He began to open his books and take out paper and pen. Hey, you want to try and hang out for lunch? We could get away from school and just chill like old times. Charity tried to give him a sincere smile because she really needed to get to the nearest library and she refused to take public transportation, not that there was much of any in that part of Georgia. Really? He drew his head back in shock. Well, I, yes, we need to speak with Ms. Coleman. Tony was at the classroom door flanked by two policemen as he spoke to her teacher. Yes, of course. Mr. History teacher replied, Charity Coleman, he said walking over to her, trying to be discreet although there was no point in that. Grab your things and go to the office for a moment please. Ah, uh, um, Charity's heart got caught in her throat. She couldn't imagine what they could want with her. She was afraid of what Tony would think or worse yet if it had to do with him too. Now Ms. Coleman, don't make a spectacle of this now. I'm sure you'll be fine okay? Yes, sir. She grabbed her things and looked over at Cerrone. She wished she would have asked them what the police said or anything that would have prepared her for this moment. In the back of her mind, she knew it would have been false hope because it would have simply not measured to the things they would be able to ask her if they knew everything she'd done. Charity walked with the officers and Tony into a private room in the back of the administration office she'd never seen before. She tried her best to regain her composure and confidence. Once she walked in the room, she saw a tall, thin and furious woman sitting at the table. It was her mother, and she'd never been more grateful for her mom to surprise her in a tense moment than she was then. She wanted to run into her arms and scream, Mommy. Charity sat next to her mother who didn't say a word to her and instead put her hand on Charity's and squeezed it under the table. That reassured her that she had a handle on things and it was all going to be okay. So what exactly is it that you brought us all down here for? Hello, ma'am. We've met before. I'm Detective Sachs. To my left here is Detective Moblam.